Larry Fink, a BlackRock chairman and CEO, joins us right now. Good morning. Welcome to Davos, guys. Uh, thank you. Well, w welcome, uh, welcome to Davos uh, yourself. Uh, I've now been to a number of dinners where your letter has uh, already been the topic of conversation. Um, did you create that topic or someone else? Did? Other people did. <laughs> okay. In one instance, I did. I will, I, uh, okay. I will, I'm happy to admit. Okay. But, um, there's been a big debate since you put this letter out. A lot of people uh, applauding it, but other people mm -hmm. uh, being critical as well, where you've effectively suggested that it's not just profit uh, that you're after as an investor, but that to get to that profit, you think that these companies need to have a social purpose, which is, is a little bit stepping out uh, in a way. I mean, maybe, maybe people, you maybe don't think it's stepping out. Well, no, I don't think it's stepping out. I think I'm actually recon reconfirming what, uh, Milton, what Milton Friedman said. Um, if you read his whole essay that everyone talks about, um, he talks about that you need to be connected in your community, especially for small companies back then in 1970. Um, as global companies who are here in Davos, we have communities everywhere and we have to be connected with every community. But the most important thing I said, and I repeated maybe three times, profits are paramount to everything a company does. Uh, they, and, and their connectivity with their shareholders is, 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 a, is about profits. What I did say, though, to remain um, in front of change, to be a part of a growth environment, I believe the, the involvement in a community to have a purpose is vital for long-term survivability, but long-term profitability. And I think most people, for most people, it resonates that, yes, you need to be connected to your employees, you need to be connected with your clients, your communities, and you operate. And that's really what, the essence of what I'm saying. But mo most importantly, I believe the companies that have purpose are the best companies in the world because it unites their employees, it connects the clients, but most importantly, it, it brings um, a, the organization onto a common plane. And I think that's very vital. And, I, you, know, and I, you know, the best companies that I know of are the ones that work towards a purpose. So the second part, though, of the critique of this yes. is that you're going to be taking a more active approach and trying to hold companies accountable, mm -hmm. not just for the profits, but for their purpose. And yes. as I think you know, because I think you were watching, we had Sam Zell on the day that the letter was... Uh, uh, you sure I was watching? Um, I, 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 uh, I hope you were. Okay. Uh, he said, I didn't know that Larry Fink has been made God. Why should a passive fund, uh, effectively you have $6 trillion, but um, why, why, should, why should you do anything more then be completely passive fund and just the, let the market do what it does? Great question. Um, as I said in my letter, an active manager, if they really dislike the company, they could sell. They don't have to own it. As a passive investor, we have to own every company that's in an index. And definitionally, that means half the companies are really good and half of them are, are underperforming. We, and... So we have to have a voice if we are going to try to be the highest level of fiduciary on behalf of our clients. And I will tell you, our investors are asking for this. A big component how we win now in our, many of the passive management. Talk to us about, you know, about your, your corporate stewardship team. So we have 35 people. We have the largest team uh, in, in the investment universe. And our team is just inadequate right now. Uh, so I've committed to raise a team to 70, 75 people. We put in one of the founding partners to, to lead it, Barbara Novick, who is, has a great reputation in, in, in many circles already. Uh, and it is about for us to be engaged. So what I said very loudly is being engaged during a proxy season is not being engaged because it's a binary outcome. Yes or no, do I agree with it? We're criticized quite considerably because we vote 91% with management. Now, the reality is... We're engaged with so many of these clients, and they're changing their input towards their proxy with our engagement. So I'm very happy that we agreed with 91% of the companies. I think that's a good testimony that we are working with more and more companies, that we're engaged. And our hope is that we, we're, we are leading that effort towards having more engagement throughout the year with more companies to try to produce better long-term outcomes 
on behalf of our investors. Larry, I completely understand what you're saying. I've, I've agreed with a lot of what you've said over the years with pushing companies to take longer term focus on right. things instead of shorter term. I, I've agreed with issues of like telling people they need to be saving more for retirement. Yep. But I invest in index funds, first, because we can't own other stocks here, and second, because I want to just own the broad market. Right. Um, that is a passive ownership. If you suddenly become the market and suddenly start telling the market what to do as an active manager, that is no longer me owning an index fund and owning these things. That's well, you, know. I, you know, I don't. I hear what you're saying. I don't agree. Okay. I, I think it is our responsibility to be engaged. I, I, we were criticized. By the way, do you charge more in fees as a result, or no? No, no. no it's just all expense that we're just another service we're leading. But we were criticized and probably criticized on this show and many other shows. People called passive. I, I've harassed you before. Yeah, but people called passive dumb money. Right. Oh, well, let me ask you a separate question then in terms of how active you can ultimately be, because right. the other piece of this is that there is an inherent conflict at play, right? Um, you have clients in, in iShares and all, mm. all in, in that business, which you're trying to hold these companies accountable for. But at the same time, a lot of companies use you for all sorts of other programs, whether it's true 401k programs, true. Yes. whether it's bond. Pro I mean, there's a whole assortment. All of the you know, there's a huge corporate client base. And so the question is, how, you know, can you effectively uh, decide I'm going to attack two or three board members when we also have business with them on the other side? Great question. But we've had that conflict from day one. So that conflict has not changed. That conflict is, is real. This is why we have this independent organization that's doing this. I'm personally not involved. When I get a phone call from a CEO about what are you doing to one of my board members or whatever that question may be using your framing, um, I send that, that inquiry to that team. I, we have to be independent, we, the leadership of the firm, on these, on these uh, individual votes of companies. We do meet with our, our corporate stewardship team and talk about policies. So there's some policies that, you know, I'll have an input on. But when it comes to any single company, we're not involved at all. Larry, Larry, let me have it approach it from a different angle. Corporation XYZ uh, makes a fantastic product. Um, they uh, satisfy their customers' needs uh, better than their competition. Um, their, uh, their employees are, are happy. They're, they're, you know, making uh, great strides in, in planning for their retirement. Good. Um, they're, they pay taxes to the United States government. Everything is, is great, but the CEO doesn't feel like embracing whatever societal changes are in vogue at the moment that Larry Fink happens to think are in vogue. But so, so he doesn't want, he, he actually does, is, is not going to play ball with you on what you think, which you said change, you, embracing change. He doesn't want, he thinks some of these changes may not be lasting. They may be whatever the certain side of the political spectrum decides is important at, 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 at that moment. Are you going to uh, try and get him, uh, you know, oust that board and, so, and vote your shares against no, him? Of course well, not. First of, all, like? you're, first of all, you're personalizing with me. I'm not All right, BlackRock. Okay, Fine, Black thank Rock. you. All right. Two. All right. Well, this is your idea, isn't it? Or whose idea is Two. it? Two. It's the, 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 it's the okay, first BlackRock. All right. I think of you as BlackRock, which well, is a compliment. Thank you. Okay. But it's not. Hopefully it's not. Um, not a compliment that I'm not. There's more than BlackRock. <laughs> I get you. I get you. I'm building you up. Good. I'm, Good. Thanks, Joe. Um, biggest money manager no, in the world. If a company is performing really, really well, um, as you just suggested, and it is a, a beacon for its employees and all that stuff, I am very confident that engagement is going to be very positive. And, and so I think you just framed a question. You framed it in a way that I don't see that being a reality. I, I will tell you, uh, I'm, I have had conversations pretty close to half the CEOs that, who received the letter. And I don't believe they're sucking up to me or anything Larry, like that. What if, what if, they were very what if you favorable. Tell Exxon, they got to stop drilling for hydrocarbons and they got to do renewable energy because don't, they don't. You're, because you're, they're you're framing no, things. Well, let's we, say you do that. Let's say. But you that's not going to happen. That we have not right. done that. Okay. You're framing hypotheticals that are not even the realm of reality. I mean, it's nice right. to talk about and framing questions that are 
okay. that are what, two how, percent profit. How, how, how about Coca-Cola? You tell them no more sugary drinks. We're, we were not. That's their business. Their business is it providing. Okay. How know, about enjoyment. Philip Morris? How about Philip Morris? No more tobacco products. But we will not do that either. If we're if, well, if, then, if, what will you? Do? Then what? what those type are of not the issues. Which, what type of things? But those are, are not the issues. If they're going to be in a, you know, we have these issues many times. If an individual is investing in an index that has Philip Morris, that has Coca-Cola, we're not going to be changing their business models to that way. That's their business model. So, but, you know, so we're not going to be saying, get out of your business. Understood. Um, before we let you go, what do you make of all of these companies that have announced recently plans to increase uh, salaries or bonuses? We're just talking about Starbucks. Yeah. Talking about JP Morgan. I don't know if you're doing anything similar at BlackRock. Well, we, we, we paid people up 11% last year. So it, people did very, very well at, at BlackRock last year. Um, I, I actually believe um, people are raising compensation now because it's harder and harder to find talented people. You know, at a 4%, uh, at a 4 unemployment rate, I believe it's harder and harder to do it. Do so you think so it's I a think, purely economic decision? I think... 90% of it's economic, and, and the last 10% is this PR. You would have done it anyway. I mean, we constantly raise wages. We try to remain competitive. We don't want to announce it. There's areas where we raise wages much more than other areas where there's a real competitive issue. Uh, I, I believe it's if, if the CEOs are raising compensation uh, and providing more equity ownership to their employees, that's a fantastic outcome. And... I do believe the big issue that's going to confront more and more companies is retention of employees. Okay. And I believe that's going to become a, a big cry out, especially with our immigration policies in our okay. country. Larry Fink, thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.